Welcome classic rock fans to my introduction to Jethro Tull. The Jethro Tull are a strange band to say the least, obviously built around the genius that is Ian Anderson. Not to mention of course that plethora of different styles, tones and shades brought about by the numerous lineup changes that have occurred over the years and the sheer diversity of the music. I mean good lord where do you start? With Jethro Tull we get everything from baroque chamber music, medieval anachronisms, pastoral folk, to whimsical acoustic numbers steeped in myth and archetype, and that's before we get to the sweeping melodrama of the prog years. And then of course we get the pop stylings of a, an album like War Child. It's a kaleidoscopic world of music and brilliant music at that. It's a bit of a thorny nettle to grasp really in terms of which album would you recommend to somebody as an introduction to Jethro Tull? I suppose the easy answer here is to go for a compilation album, but I generally don't like those. Uh, I find myself weeding them out of my collection. Uh, they tend to be just a hodgepodge of tunes, uh, tunes that tend to have a little bit more commercial gravitas, I suppose, rather than a fair representation of a singular artistic vision or conceptual thread that, uh, that we get on a, an original album. But Tull's Christmas album is different, of course. It's built around that central motif or theme that is Christmas. So Tull's Christmas album aside, which album would you recommend to somebody as an introduction to this band? It's certainly a bit of a head scratch. I mean, where do you begin? I mean, I thought about Broadsword and the Beast. It's a terrific album, but I don't think it's their strongest. Crest of a Knave is another strong album, I think, for the 80s, 90s period. In fact, Ian Anderson has said in an interview that uh, Budapest is the quintessential Jethro Tull number. However, I feel uh, perhaps an album from what I would deem as Tull's classic period would perhaps be a better choice. I love the Tull prog years, to be honest with you. Passion Play and that prog parody, Thick as a Brick, the mother of all concept albums. But I wouldn't dream of giving these to people as an introduction to this band. Too much melodrama, too much saxophone. I mean, don't get me wrong, these albums are infused with that dry, observational, satirical wit of Ian Anderson, but they're just too dense, I think. Stand Up would be an excellent choice. Some would argue this is Jethro Tull's first album. This was, of course, is a, a terrific record, but it's not really representative of the Tull sound, I think. I love the psychedelic blues of Song for Jeffrey, but Stand Up is a, a band finding its future. That wonderful, eclectic sense of experimentation and experimentation with musical form as well. It bristles with energy and vitality, flirting with different genres and different styles and some really interesting use of um, exotic instrumentation on this one. But it was an early album, it's an early album heavily influenced by Bert Jansch and Roy Harper, of course. It's kind of like the cigar after the main course, which brings me back to our original conundrum, what should the main course be? I thought about War Child. I mean, War Child is a, I consider an accessible album. I love the way it starts off with the siren. Reminds me of Black Sabbath's War Pigs, but without the coke and menace. And we get Ian Anderson's voice rumbling away, the jangle of teacups and the crisp snap of a morning paper is a perfect way to start an album. I love the analogy between warfare and the brutality of everyday commerce. I think that's really well done on this record. As I've said, this is one of those albums that's infused with Anderson's wit and those what glorious metaphorical representations of ourselves as we go about our daily lives are, are just delightful. But I do feel it lacks a, a unifying feel to it. It, it comes across as a, just a collection, a, a jumble of tunes. And of course, Jethro Tull live at this juncture, we get Ian Anderson those rather strange packet preserving cod pieces. Minstrel in the Gallery, uh, one of your favourites. Uh, you've given me a good tongue lashing for not rating this high enough in my Jethro Tull video, worst to best. But it's too introspective, too low key. Uh, recorded on the French Riviera, this album is a million miles away from the, the prog bombast we got with Thick as a Brick and a Passion Play. This album has been described by Rolling Stone magazine as Jethro Tull's Elizabethan Boogie. A couple of real contenders, I think, for the introductory crown would have to be Tull's Rustic Period, Songs from the Wood and Heavy Horses. We see Ian Anson hanging up his prog trousers to assume the folky old English facade of the country squire. Songs from the Wood is a gorgeous album full of idiosyncratic and whimsical allusions to woodland sprites and fairies and God knows what. A perfect antidote, of course, to all the, the phlegm and gristle of the punk movement that was carving up the urban landscape at the time. And then we get Heavy Horses, of course, which is a stunning album, one that's very much grounded in the realities of uh, country life as opposed to all the mythology and romance of Songs from the Wood. 
this Nam that looks with a, a heavy heart towards the, the march of progress, uh, what Thomas Hardy calls the ache of modernism in his novel Test of the D'Urbervilles. But as perfect as these albums are, and they are perfect as far as I'm concerned, they represent a specific period uh, for Jethro Tull. Uh, as I've said, their rustic period, and are imbued with these charming affectations towards, dare I say it, English folk. So perhaps they're not a perfect representation of who Jethro Tull really are. So I've come to the realisation that perhaps Aqualung is the album of choice here. This album is a stunning progression from those earlier records. Uh, Roger Waters has said that uh, albums like Atom Heart Mother and Medal were steps towards Dark Side of the Moon, their conceptual masterpiece in my opinion. I think the same could be said here of Stand Up and Benefit. It leads us to the brilliance and conceptual thread and unified vision that is the Aqualung album. Although not a concept album as Ian Anderson would say with a, an admonishing wag of his index finger. On this album we get fascinating song constructs from CD vignettes to the to the folklore and fabled imagery of a song like Mother Goose for example. And we get the hard rock stylings of Side 2, the God Side, with uh, tracks like Locomotive Breath for example. A wonderful song that deals with this apocalyptic dread of the world or our lives spiralling out of control, built around the perfect metaphor of the locomotive. That iconic riff, of course, which for me is as famous as the Stone's Satisfaction or the Beatles' Day Tripper, and it introduces the listener to what has very much become a, a motif for Jethro Tull, that wheezy old soap dodger Aqualung. Yes, of course, this album doesn't sound fantastic. It does sound a little bit emaciated, but I do think Stephen Wilson has done a, a fabulous job on this album. It sounds as good as it's gonna get. Nevertheless, despite its limitations, I think this would be my Tull album of choice as a perfect introduction to who this band really are. Anyway, what would yours be? Anyway, thank you for watching. Do click like, subscribe, and check that bell so you get notified of any future uploads. And if you enjoy my musings on music, do check out some of the links below for ways you can support me in the work done at Classic Album Review. You can become a Patreon, or even just check out the Facebook page. I put stuff on there on a daily basis. So it just leaves me to say, I hope you're staying warm and staying safe. And more importantly, please do keep listening.